third parties can develop applications for it. We are developing our own applications for it that we probably will use as reference designs in the early phases. So, uh, for instance, we have a surveillance package where we have special cameras, low-light cameras, that can mount on the back. There'll be a camera that goes in the arm. It didn't show an arm there. And then uh, that computer is one that's designed to take user code as opposed to the code that's running in the robot. Why don't we bring out the robot? Sure. And, let's hey, let's actually see it in action. So here's Spot Mini, and uh, Seth Davis is operating it. It's not running autonomously right now, although many of the control functions are running on the onboard uh, computer. Seth, Seth is a guy that you never actually see in the videos, but, but he's in every single past video, there's been Seth or someone essentially doing Seth's job controlling the robot. And these videos that we've seen this week are the first time that this has really been demoed autonomously. Right. That's right. So, as I said, this is a platform. The arm is an extra cost option that you can take off. And that white box is a computer that really we're only using today because it's got a, a better radio than the standard radio. And in this environment where you all have cell phones and Wi-Fi, uh, it's sometimes a challenge to uh, get that working. So this is using a spread spectrum uh, uh, radio that makes it easier. Um, the robot's omnidirectional. When it came out, it was using a, a number of different walking gates. It's omnidirectional, so Seth can, just using a joystick, uh, steer it around. And uh, he'll, we'll, we'll have the robot out in the lobby after the talk, and if some of you will get a chance to drive. And let me just show a few things on there. Uh, there's cameras here. There's two sets of stereo <laughs> cameras. And there's also one uh, on the left. You want to turn it, turn it in place? So there's also one back here. There's a butt cam. There's another one on this side. Is that, is that, that a trademark name, the butt that, cam? We should, we should yeah, trademark that. Get on that. Um, the joints, this is all electric. So even though Atlas has hydraulics, it's got a quick disconnect uh, battery underneath, which you can't see here. Um, and again, the arm, which has similar technology to the, uh, to the legs. Uh, one of the things we love to do is show that you can stabilize the hand while the body moves. And this looks like a kind of a show-off trick, but really this is important if you're going to do manipulation in the world. You want to think about how the hand moves and not worry about the body. And I can do that. I can touch Brian over here on his shoulder and I can move my body all around and still my forces between me and Brian are, are pretty modest. And so we're building up that to do uh, mobile manipulation and... Uh, and other tricks. So we're not doing autonomous control, but you'll see that the sensors can be used to go over simple obstacles. So the robot is looking ahead and seeing these and using uh, quadratic programming in order to plan its footsteps so that it uh, goes over smoothly. You can see it, it arches the body up a little bit in advance. There it missed the, the thing a little bit. You want to go over sideways? This is riskier, but for you, so that because we have cameras, or you can go backwards if you want. If because we have cameras on the side, it can see the box and step over. You notice that the back legs stepped up and the front legs uh, didn't in that case. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Spot. So, so I have to ask you, you know, as, as we're talking about these practical applications for a robot like this, I mean, does this really make sense as a security robot? Obviously, we've seen a number of companies develop these wheeled robots. These are out in the world right now patrolling areas. You know, why is somebody going to invest in such a sophisticated robot? You know, I think people think that most places are easy to get around with wheeled things. But uh, it's really not the case. Uh, almost every place you go, has some obstacle that wheeled things uh, struggle with. Uh, in fact, though, there's also applications that really take advantage of uh, legs, such as uh, going in a skyscraper up the stairwells, checking for things left there that shouldn't be there. You can imagine uh, bad things left there. And we're talking to people who want to use our robots to go do those tests. You can imagine people wouldn't, uh, you might not like going up and down the stairs in a 20-story building. Uh, if you had to use your own legs on it and do it, you know, three times a day or something, but the robots could do that. But even short of that, most places have something where uh, wheels 
uh, don't really get you everywhere. And uh, we think Spot Mini can go uh, to a much larger fraction of places. It, this seems like a case, though, where you know you've developed you developed these robots a while ago. Obviously, the earliest robots you were developing were for the military. You know, Big Dog was a pack robot. You've you've since shrunken it down. It's got an electric motor now. But um, I mean, was security really an application that had occurred to you from the beginning? Uh, it, it was on the short list. It's, yeah. it's only one. You know, we're also looking at construction. In construction, construction. Whereas productivity in other areas has consistently gone up, if you look at construction, it's almost flat. It, no technology mm -hmm. has really been brought to bear to help. So the people who are developing that are really hungry for help. And uh, there's BIM, uh, building information uh, management data that they want to collect automatically. There's uh, update status reports that you can do. So the application is very much like the industrial security one where you want to go around and use your sensors in order to assess what's going on. But here it's in a, a process where the environments are changing every day. The terrain uh, is very varied depending upon what the construction site is like. And so uh, that's another one. But you know, people send us ideas for applications of these robots um, every day. Uh, one that we get lots of requests for is uh, a wheelchair replacement because someone hasn't been able to go you know, out on a hiking trail uh, in their normal wheelchair and they wonder if we could build a, uh, a legged one. We're, we're not actively working on that uh, yet, but uh, I think it's, you know, and there's many other things. So when you talk about blue skying technology over at Boston Dynamics um, and you're developing these robots, I mean, is it important that it has some sort of inherent real world value to it? I think that we don't want to let immediate ROI constrain our thinking for everything. And so that's why we have the two thrusts, the shoot over the horizon, make the future happen thrust, as well as the take available technology, and you know, Spot Mini's available technology, and work on applying it, work on cost reducing it, making it more reliable, making it more usable, you know, user interface, make the software better. Uh, and see what you can do. But you know, robotics isn't like some fields where the, the applications are, are all well known and worked out. You know? So we're, we're simultaneously figuring out what the use cases are while we're uh, developing the technology. Well, you, you know, you've had, you've had quite a long lead time in terms of you know, starting the company <laughs> and actually creating a, a, a commercialized product. It's been about uh, 25 years at this point. Uh, I, I, saw a talk you gave recently where you said you expect that you know, robots are going to become essentially as ubiquitous as the internet moving forward. I said bigger than the internet. Bigger than the internet, more ubiquitous than the internet. How the, far out is that vision? Well, I, the idea is that the internet lets you touch all the information in the world, but robots, especially if you combine it with the internet, let you touch everything in the world and manipulate it. And so you know, that's a bigger idea. Uh, it's going to take a long time to get to bigger than the internet, uh, but I do think uh, the impact of robots could be vast, and I'm, you know, we're working hard on uh, making that happen, as well as uh, a lot of other people, some of them you have here uh, at TechCrunch today. Great. Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.